let's see where we were yesterday. Okay, let me see. So, okay, so this is last time, right? So let's let's just remind you. Let me just remind you very quickly uh, the model. No, so the we were discussing about this reaction diffusion model. So the, the, the reaction diffusion model, it's this, this interesting particle system where particles perform exclusion dynamics. Okay, so they, they move, uh, uh, so what, what the, the type of motion you see is there. So you, uh, particles move between neighbors X and Y uh, with rate N squared. And, uh, and, and there's this rule that uh, you allow only one particle per site. And on top of that, we put uh, some um, some uh, reaction, okay, uh, to make the the, the system uh, irreducible in the in our lattice, and uh, moreover, to make it somehow non-reversible, in the sense that uh, the invariant measures for this uh, Markov chain now. Is going to be it's not going to be reversible. Okay, so if you look at only at the exclusion process, the, 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 the invariant measures are just the uniform measures on the set of fixed number of particles, and moreover, they are, they are reversible. And, and in this case, the, we would check no that uh, in fact the invariant measure, although we don't know, we don't know it explicitly, cannot be reversible. Okay, so that's an that's a situation we call non-equilibrium stationary state. Okay, non-equilibrium stationary state. Is, uh, for, the definition for us was just the invariant measure of an irreducible Markov chain, which was not reversible. Okay. And last time we managed to prove this bound here. Okay, so that the the, ent the derivative of the entropy by means of this uh, Jaws inequality and uh, this averaging procedure that I explained to you, that is something that we call the, um, uh, well, some, you can call it if you want to the quantitative uh, replacement lemma. And we prove this inequality. And from here, you see that uh, you can obtain a nice bound on the entropy just by integrating this, uh, this inequality. And ignoring the Kahayu Shandera because yes, it's just a negative term, so you can ignore it. Okay. And uh, so, so you get at the end that the, the entropy is bounded by e to the a constant sign t times this constant a d of n, which is equal to one in dimension one, log n dimension two, and n to the d minus two in dimensions e equal to three. And I show you that this implies uh, that the density of particles has satisfied this hydrodynamic limit. And okay, maybe I take this out so you can hear me better. Uh, and then, and moreover, in this hydrodynamic limit, we were able to introduce an estimate on the rate of conversion. Okay. We were saying that in the in, in terms of, for example, variances, we got this uh, this bound of the form one over n squared. Okay, so that was the last time. And now what I want to do is take that, take a little bit of advantage of the fact that I still have some um, negative term left, some energy left in my inequality to improve things a little bit. So in order to do that, I need to talk about uh, what is called the log sobel inequality. Okay, so this is very important for us at least is that uh, to arrive here, we need to use the log Sobolev inequality. Okay, that that in in in, in at least in, in our point of view makes all of all of this work that we have been done very flexible and uh, and 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 something that in principle can be applied to general uh, theory of Markov chains. Okay, because log Sobolev inequalities are difficult to get. But uh, fortunately, in this particular case of the, this reaction diffusion. Model, we do have the log Sobolev inequality, and it's, a, an act, it's actually very easy to prove. So then you, you, you can just use it. Okay. So let me explain to you what do I mean by the log Sobolev inequality. Uh, so it's, it's, it's a general uh, 
fact about the measures and generators of irreducible Markov chains. Okay, so the setup is the following. So you start with a measure in your state space omega. Uh, let's assume that the state space is finite, so we don't have problems with the convergence of anything. And also let's assume that uh, the measure is um, it's a reference measure in the sense that uh, it has full support, okay? Let's take L, the generator of an irreducible Markov chain, okay? And uh, let's take uh, gamma, the Cahé Duchamp associated to L, okay? So is, is, is this a uh, bilinear operator that you can construct out of L. Then the log of F constant, which is not, it's a, it's, a, it's a function of two parameters here, which is, uh, is the measure and the Cahé Duchamp, okay? Is by definition the supremum between the entropy of, uh, so it's a supremum over all densities F in my, um, uh, in my space uh, mu, uh, in, my, in my space omega with respect to the measure mu. And then you, what you do, you divide the entropy by the Cahé Duchamp. I evaluate it in the function square root of it. Okay, that is what people call the log solve constant. And here you say, well, okay, well, uh, this is really a very ad hoc definition, right? Because what I have here in my previous inequality is that uh, I have something negative, which is exactly the Cahé Duchamp, and I have something positive, which is exactly the entropy. So, of course, uh, I can now I can relate these two by this constant that I just defined, and uh, which uh, is very convenient. So it, it's really, really, really um, convenient for us that uh, people care about this constant beforehand, right? Because it's exactly what is uh, needed to our purposes. Okay, so. This constant is called the log of constant, and it's a function of the measure and of the Carré Duchamp gamma, okay? Um, so let me state a lemma. This is a very simple lemma, okay? So I, 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 here I'm not really uh, saying that uh, these guys really prove this, but um, because probably uh, someone proved it before, this is a very simple thing. This is just what uh, in, in our context that the, uh, uh, what they did, it, it, it switches very well our uh, definition. So, so if, you, if you want to read more about the uh, log of LF constants, you can either look at diagonal sal of so diagonal sal of cost. It's, it's, um, it's a survey about log of LF constants. So it's a, it's a very good uh, reading if you, if you are interested too. And uh, Li and Yao, they prove, um, they computed the, the log of LF constant of the exclusion process on the complete graph. And on the way to do that, they prove this lemma that I'm just mentioning here. Okay, so, and the lemma is the following. So it's basically that the log sobre f constant is uniform in N, in the case of the reaction diffusion model. Okay, so let us remember that in the reaction diffusion model, there were three parameters, okay? These three parameters were, remember, were A, B, and lambda, right? Because the those uh, in, in the in the reaction rates there were there was a plus lambda divided by two d the sum of the, of the neighbors and in, in the in the other guy then the that was the creation rate and the annihilation rate was b one can state this lemma in a, in, in a more um, a specific way but it's not really imp important for us it's just, is that if you fix a and b and you fix epsilon zero okay so. Epsilon zero, it's a, it's a constant that pulls you away from zero and one. So zero and one are kind of singular densities in this, uh, in this business, because if you, if, if you start with zero particles, the exclusion doesn't do anything, no? Because there is no particles, so there is no exclusion motion. And if you start with, with everybody one, so everything full of particles, also the exclusion part of the dynamics doesn't do anything. And the... Uh, and that's kind of bad for our uh, purposes. But uh, so if, if, you, if, you, if you just uh, fix A and B and go a little bit away from, from the boundaries, the log of the constants is uniform, okay? So in the density row, so I'm putting here, so you see uh, it's the log of the constant with respect to that measure, which is the product of the nullis of parameter rho, and the gamma, which is the gamma of our model, the, our reaction diffusion model, okay? 
So the logs of a constant is actually a constant in, in, our, in, in, a, in our particular case. That's very good because if we, if we go back to the entropy estimate, you see that uh, we can improve. We can now use the, the, the little bit of energy we left there to improve our computation, okay? So you just say, well, if the log sovereign constant is bounded, that means that the entropy is bounded by the integral of the carré duchamp Therefore, what you have there, well, you just write it down, okay? So it's uh, now, now you have a constant. Notice that um, I've been very picky about this alpha, no? Uh, so so I, 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 uh, I was a little bit picky to, to, to keep alpha in the notation because now it's going, it's going to come handy to have this alpha in the notation because you see that here, if the coefficient in front of the, of the entropy at the other side, on the right hand side of this inequality is negative, then when you solve the differential inequality, you get that a bound on the entropy, which is uniform. You see that in that case, no, you will get something of the form H prime of T less or equal than minus delta H T like some constant, let's say A. And if you solve this equation, you see that the H T is less or equal than H zero E to the minus delta T plus A divided by delta one minus E to the minus delta T. You see that this is uniformly bounded in T. Of course, this constant A here depends on the N, no? So in, in this, that, that's the, the last line, I'm just assuming that the A. And here, I should say that maybe, let's assume for simplicity that H0 is zero, just to, just to get rid of this term. It doesn't really matter because uh, if you send T to infinity, this H0 A anyway is going to get to infinity, okay? And then, um, and what happened here, so what happens is that, that one can send t to infinity. Now that we have a uniform bound on the entropy, on the relative entropy, one can send t to infinity. And the relative entropy is a continuous function on the, on the density f. In general, it's a, so, so in, in a general setting, it's always upper, upper semi-continuous or lower semi-continuous, upper semi-continuous. Okay. Um, <coughs> But, uh, but here uh, we are in a finite setting, so it's, 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 it's continuous. Which means that uh, if the limit of the entropies is bounded by some constant C, then the entropy of the limit is also bounded by constant C. And what happens with the law of our Markov chain when T goes to infinity? It converts to the stationary state, okay? So a very simple corollary of this thing is uh, this, this thing here with, and actually stating as a theorem because it's, uh, uh, it's, it's really something very interesting that gives you a lot of information about the, the non-equilibrium uh, non stationary state. And that's not so common in the literature. And so this, as I told you before, this non-equilibrium stationary state are not so easy to, uh, to describe because unless we have some a priori description of them, they are not very accessible. So here we have some information and we can say that the entropy, the relative entropy of, this, of the non-equilibrium stationary state of this reaction diffusion model is uh, bounded by a constant time AD to the N. Well, this AD to the N was this, uh, these numbers, no? Just to remind you, ADN, it's equal to one, D equals one, log N, D equals two, N to the D minus two in D. So in particular, this thing here implies a, a quantitative large large numbers for the density of the, of the non-equilibrium stationary state. Um, so we have, um, we have a restriction on lambda. Remember, so this was here, no? Um, we want this constant to be negative in front of the entropy, okay? So the constant K does not depend on lambda. Therefore, 
if we say, and, and one can, and remember that alpha was something of the form lambda divided by rho star. So if you send lambda to zero, rho star converges to a number between zero, a strict, uh, which is strictly between zero and one because it depends on A and B. It's, it's something of the form A divided by A plus B. So um, it means that uh, if you send lambda to zero, alpha goes to zero as well. So for lambda small enough, the prefactor of the entropy in, in, in inequality is negative, and therefore we have this uh, convergence, uh, this uniform bound in time. This is what people call hydrostatics in this, uh, in this context, uh, which means that uh, it, it, it's like a hydrodynamic limit in the sense that we are showing that the density uh, of particles uh, converts to some, uh, some function. Here, this is just a constant, but it's, remember that we have space, so it's, a, it's, a, it's, 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 a, it's constant in space, but it's still a special result. So uh, there could be a, a special fluctuations. And uh, this, uh, this theorem here, this inequality, uh, rules these uh, fluctuations out. Once you have proved this with people call hydrostatics, a natural question is, uh, what about the CLT? Okay, and um, and in fact, uh, at least in dimension d equals one, it looks a promising question to talk about C uh, central unit theorem around this uh, density of particles rho star, which remember that rho star was the 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 zero of the reaction function of the reaction diffusion equation, um, because remember that. Yesterday, I showed to you this, no? Think about dimension d equals one, okay? So to be a little bit more concrete, this, th this is the bound we had. This, is a, this was the density of particles at time t. The bar here means that the density is centered around the um, row t. And here you can send t to infinity. What happens when you send t to infinity? Here, now you have the density of particles, but instead of uh, having uh, the law of the process at time t, what you have is the invariant measure. And you still have the same thing here, okay? So yesterday I got here the, the exponential factor, but now, now we got rid of the exponential factor so we can take the limit as t goes to infinity and we get this. Okay, so, and if, if you are attentive, if this guy here were just uh, IID random variables, this is the right order, right? Because this, here there is a one over n sum of things. So the variance of that is of order one over n, which means that if you multiply, now it makes sense to define, so this is the next definition, what we call the fluctuation field. Within dimension one, it's just this thing here, okay? So what we do is that, okay, at the level of large numbers, these things converge. Now let's try to see uh, to see if the CLT works. And uh, then, the, the in principle, maybe square root of n is the right normalization. Putting this new definition here, you see that this guy has finite variance and a sequence of random variables, which is uh, has uh, an, uh, for which you have a uniform bound in L two, is what we call. Well, it's not only what we call, but in particular is a tight sequence, right? So it satisfies tightness. Therefore, it has uh, a convergence of sequence. Therefore, we are here we are in good shape to try to prove a CLT. And, next, and in fact, this is what we did with, uh, uh, with, with Patricia Gonzalez, uh, Rodrigo Marino, and Otavio Meneses, uh, is that uh, with using our previous bound on the entropy, we were able to show the CLT for the density of, uh, of particles, but now with respect to the stationary measure of the reaction diffusion model. So this is an example of, a, of the central limit theorem for a non-equilibrium stationary state. And the limits, so here uh, people maybe will not be so excited because I, the limit is actually Gaussian. So as you may have noticed, it's very fancy these days to have non-Gaussian limits, but uh, though it's a, it's, it's a Gaussian limit, it's not just white noise. It's different from white noise, okay? So 
I, I computed the, the variance, okay? So there are some constants there, which I computed and uh, since uh, uh, I did it by myself, nobody checked them, I, they're, they're probably wrong. Mm. But, uh, but, but, but what is interesting about this rate is that uh, this field here is actually the sum of two independent Gaussian fields. One, which is white noise, and another one, which is a massive Gaussian free field. Okay, so particular, this, uh, this, uh, this is something nice because this reaction diffusion model is really kind of interpolating between two paradigmatic uh, Gaussian fields that appears every day in, 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 the, in the scaling limits of, uh, of interacting particle systems, which are the, the white noise and the Gaussian free field. Okay, so what, what happens is that uh, the exclusion process would like to have white noise as the invariant measure. And the reaction part, you can think about the reaction part as a sort, sort of, uh, um, of easing type of that dynamics. And then the, the reaction part wants the fluctuations to be Gaussian. Uh, Gaussian free field. What happens here is you have a, combi a combination of both. Yes? Uh, and then, uh, you, usually when you have a free field scaling, you, you don't, so you normalize by the standard scaling n to the d over two. Usually for free field, you have uh, n to the d minus two over two. Yeah. How, How come? Why is that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's because of, of the scaling of the reaction, which is different from the scaling of exclusion. So you put the extra factor the rate. Yeah, so um, that's not completely rigorous, but that is, is the intuition behind. Um, so, so, um, so I think it's a nice result because it, is, it, it, it tells you various things, okay? So um, I, here, I, I just show you that in, in dimension one, it should be easy to, Maybe not so easy, but it's it's very uh, natural to think that this is going to be true because I mean I I meet, I made these three computations and I already show you that the the uh, this fluctuation field this this uh, this number there is uh, is tight okay so it's um, so it, it does have at least one limit but uh, something I find interesting is that our theorem works also for dimensions two and three. Okay, and for dimensions two and three, it's not true that this computation here uh, gives you a tightness. And so you have to work more. But, um, but maybe more interesting than that is that in dimension one, GFF, white noise plus GFF is a, uh, absolutely continuous with respect to white noise. So is the, in dimension one, the Gaussian free field is just the Brownian motion, right? Uh, no, no, it's not Brownian motion, it's, uh, how call it? Bridge. Bridge, right? Well, if it's massive, it's a little bit different, but it's still, it's still no? So it's, it's, it's like adding a function to, uh, to the white noise. And, uh, and the, the, the idea is that the white noise is very, um, so, it, it, it's irregular, it, it's, it's not even a measure, it's, you have to understand it as a distribution. This is always uh, um, a problem when you try to formulate it, this, all these theorems in a, uh, in, a, in a rigorous way because you cannot avoid the technicality to go to a spaces of distributions because the white noise itself has the bad taste to be a distribution. Um, but uh, it is a distribution and then the GFF is a, is a function so when you add the function to distribution, you get something which is absolutely continuous with respect to the distribution. Okay, so uh, you can understand it in various ways. And, uh, well, th uh, and this is only that has to be, no? Because we already proved that, uh, this, the, that, the, um, that this measure here has finite entropy with respect to the Bernoulli product measure. And the Bernoulli product measure has as a limit the white noise. And I already told you that, that, that relative entropy is a uh, upper uh, semi-continuous function. And here you, you, you are really using this with more power, no? because now that the limits are 
measures in the space of distributions, but you still have relative entropy. And that's a lot of that's a lot to say because it's an infinite dimensional space and the, the entropy is bounded. Entropy bounded between two random distributions, it's a very um, uh, restrictive condition. It's a, it's a, it's it's a, it's a very strong condition. Sorry, Mil. Yes. Uh, a question. I was wondering. Maybe you said uh, you said it, I missed it. How are these two white noises and massive uh, Gaussian free field coupled? I mean, are ah, they, yeah, they're are independent. They are independent? Okay. Yeah, you can just say it's 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 as simple as this. You know? So this a plus b omega square divided by c plus d omega square. You can just write this as um, a divided by c, no? Plus so something, no? <laughs> uh, e divided by uh, C minus D omega square. Thank you, thank you, thank you. B C minus A B. Right. So, um, so you 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 see that at, at the level of the of the variances uh, on Fourier space. The constant is, a, is what gives you white noise. This is what gives you the massive uh, Gaussian free field. And since you are just adding, that makes them, them independent. Since I, I, I still have a, a few minutes left, uh, let me give you. Can I ask one? Ah, yes, yes, yes. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Thanks. Um, just about the, the lambda naught constant, um, is that a terribly restrictive condition? And is there a, a reason why the the idea wouldn't hold for a larger lambda, or is it um, just a, a technical sort of constraint that we saw up here you know, from before? Okay, yeah. so so um, usually when you do this uh, log solid business, you always get, uh, if you look at the literature, it's, it's always kind of related to perturbative arguments. So you always get this, this uh, something has to be small than some constant, and you cannot, it's really part of the technical conditions because you are using this log solid inequality. In the other hand, it's a, it's a reasonable uh, assumption to have some restriction of a smallness here, because uh, imagine, imagine you have a situation like this. So your function f has only one zero, but it's something like this. Right, so um, turning your uh, turning your parameters in some way, you can you, you can you can pass from this situation to this situation, right? Very easily, and uh, and uh, and the point is that uh, our previous result, we, uh, where we didn't know whether the constant uh, was positive or negative, uh, before using the log solid inequality, works for this and for this type of situation. So it's a, it's a very general result. So you really need to, to, to add something to the, your, your dynamics to be able to go to this uh, uniform in time condition. Okay. So you really, uh, it's really, it's, it's pretty reasonable to have some conditions there because the um, phenomenology of uh, reaction diffusion equations is, uh, is very rich. And you really need some condition that puts you on the, on, on the region on which this behavior is the is, 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 is a expected one. Yes? So in, in the formula for the variance in the denominator, there seems to be a, a particular value of lambda, say, the one that uh, cancels the first term. Does that mean that you have, I don't know, a, a massless free field in that case? Or uh, uh, is there any other way? I mean, is it a value that you can reach? In, no, in your no. Model? Well, I, I, I don't know. I don't expect to be so. I mean, I'm not entirely clear anymore on what A and B and lambda are uh, one with respect to the other. So is it possible to define the model in such a way that this term vanishes to begin with? So um, I'm not sure exactly because uh, uh, since I knew from the beginning that I will have this restriction, I was kind of sloppy with the constants. Mm -hmm. Then, if you track all the constants, it seems that you are not going to get there. Yeah, right. Because uh, so, uh, because the log solve it's uh, that, that that's always the, 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 the issue with the log solve inequality. You no, know? it's uh, when you do have log solve inequality that implies convergence to, to to the stationary state for a Markov chain in a very strong topology, which means that the log solve inequality cannot be very. Small, 
smaller the better, or whether it cannot be good because it, it really takes into account the worst case scenario of, of your Markov chain. So you, you, it's like uh, put your Markov chain in the worst possible, you know, in the worst case scenario on which, the, the, and, and let's see how this Markov chain goes to clear. So I, I, I don't believe that, it, that this argument with the log solid inequality can be pushed to, to cancel the term below, mm -hmm. okay? I, I don't ex and, I, and I don't expect it to be like that. Uh, there, there is a, actually there is a reason why this, this shouldn't be the case because the idea is that um, if you if you if you approach zero there, it, it means that your GFF is going to be massless somehow. And then what is what it means for the model is that um, actually at 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 at, at density one and, or at density zero, you have the chance to be trapped somehow. So this, this mass means that your model has like a uniform tendency to go to the equilibrium. And uh, it, it, it is like putting a, uh, the constant A equal to zero. So in, in this, uh, in this uh, contact uh, dynamics, you have the chance to, 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 to become fully uh, full or, or empty and get there forever. Okay, so, ah, yes. Idea of proof. So let me just tell you a little bit about the proof. I, I'm not going to enter into too much details because, of course, uh, this is the third uh, mini course of the of, of this morning, and then everybody is is, is tired, and uh, it's Friday, etc. And so, no, not a good idea to introduce a stochastic PD. But here you go. Okay. So, but um, forget about the stochastic PD. It has a form, has some terms. If, if you understand it, uh, the terms, it's, that's good. But uh, if, if, if you don't, it, it, it doesn't really matter because the, the idea behind is very simple. Is that uh, uh, how do we access the non-equilibrium stationary state? So the idea is that um, we want to study this fluctuation field here. So we put a T here, and maybe there is a T here. Here, you don't need to put a T because maybe I just start with Bernoulli's with the, with the right density, so it gets uh, simpler. Since I can choose the initial condition, I can do that. Um, but and now what the, the, the idea is that I have a uniform, some uniform control, right? I know that the entropy is bounded. I know tightness. So now if I can uh, identify the limit of this guy up to arbitrary long times, but uh, finite, then I can identify the non-equilibrium stationary state, right? Because uh, how, the, how this thing goes, okay, you take a, 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 there is some exchange of limits that you have to justify, but we actually have some tool to justify that, that exchange of limits because of the, of the entropy, of the entropy bound. We already know that the invariant measure um, has, uh, limits. So let's see how does it work. Okay. So first, you show that uh, the the dynamic process, the dynamic fluctuation field, has a limit, which is described in some way. Okay. That that that, that uh, on which you can put your hands on. And then, of course, this theorem usually comes with hypotheses. No, it's not that it, it always works. And, and usually, what are the hypotheses in, in, in our case? So let, remember that we are focusing in dimension one. Um, the first hypothesis, of course, the initial condition has to converge to the initial condition, right? Because that's the, the, the minimum thing you can ask. If, if you want the solution of an equation to converge, at least they have to converge at time, time equal to zero. And then, Let's say that we can prove not only for this uh, fixed Bernoulli invariant measure, the convergence, but we can also allow uh, some initial conditions which are not really uh, Bernoulli. They, they may be correlated a little bit, maybe uh, this, um, with densities which are not uh, uniform in space, um, but uh, we know that the, that, that, that the entropy is bounded. Okay, so if we can prove a theorem under these two conditions, then 
we are done, basically. Because what happens? The invariant measure satisfies the conditions to be the initial, uh, the, the initial condition of our dynamic theorem. So then what happens is that uh, we know that the invariant measure is invariant. Therefore, whatever the limit is of this process starting from the invariant measure has to be a stationary solution of the limiting equation. And that's the end of the argument because the limiting equation you can show that under these conditions has only one stationary solution. Yeah, that's the, that's, that's, that's the end of the, of, the, of the argument. And that's a, that, that's a, that's a, a very simple argument but of course, it's a very simple once you already have this bound on the entropy, okay? So, yeah, let me see. Yeah, I have more things prepared, but may, maybe uh, only if you, if, 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 you, if, if you ask about them, uh, I'm going to enter into that. Um, so I think it's a, it's a, maybe, maybe it's a good point to stop and, and, and hear if you have any, any, any additional questions or comments. Thank you. Thank you. I know, I know. But, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. But you see, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, those are ugly, huh? <laughs> no, no, yeah. No, yeah, 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 yeah. No, it's, it's uh, yeah. Questions? Um, I was wondering, since, since at, in particular in this situation, you use uh, log sublet, um, why why can't you also go through hyperconductivity instead of uh, let's say ground wall estimate for the entropy and uh, so uh, where does it fail uh, the, the hyperconductivity rule uh, approach sorry okay so the problem is that our uh, our a priori bounds are very uh, are very weak no knowing that the entropy is bounded doesn't really tell uh, give you a lot of information so you cannot go beyond second moment only with entropy bound. Okay, so so if you want to go to, to use this type of high hypercontractivity arguments, you need to go to further moment. And uh, and uh, you see, it's, it's, it is true that, for example, if you know that your 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 loss are Gaussian, you have a second moment. If you have a bound on the second moment, then you have bounds on all the other moments. But here we don't know that. It's also true that if you know that, for example. You have Rademacher random variables or something which is sub Gaussian or something like that, then second moment bounds imply higher order moment bounds. But it's not true for just any measure. Okay. And, and knowing that the relative entropy is small doesn't really tell you a lot about the, 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 the law of your process. And so that's why you cannot do hypercontractivity arguments here. I don't know if that answered your question or your question was. Uh, Maybe later we can uh, okay, okay. discuss. Thanks. Thanks, uh, first of all, for the very nice uh, course. Um, so your uh, last results are for uh, lambda uh, small, but uh, are there some uh, partial results for uh, bigger lambdas or conjectures? So some heuristics. I mean. Yeah, yeah. So 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 the, the heuristic is more or less like this, no? So. Um, if you play with lambda, you can create this, this situation here. And in this situation here, you don't expect the uh, product of a nullis to be a good approximation because you have uh, two. So the, the, this, is, this, this guy is stable, and this guy is also stable. And so for example, our theorem, our first theorem works if you start from this point here, which is unstable. And that's why you cannot, in our first theorem, you cannot do better than e to the ct in, as a dependence on time. Because for this type of situation, you do expect entropy to grow exponentially fast. Right? So, um, so you really need to do something. And, the, and I, I, was, I was telling you, if, if you parameterize this, this guys by, by a constant lambda, if you play with the lambda and you can go from this situation to this situation okay and uh, and that's and, and that's 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 very challenging yet no 
to understand how you go from these type of situations, how the, how this transition happened. And this is this is very important. This is even not well understood phenomenologically. No, um, if you think about the hurricane again, so I think that the, 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 the hurricane is a very good example because it is a non-equilibrium stationary state, and then, and when you have a cold atmosphere and warm waters. If the gradient of temperature is not big, is not too big, what happens is that uh, the most efficient way to transport is, is just convection. Okay, so you, you, you have these uh, nice uh, ascending currents, and uh, you, you probably have seen uh, so also birds use them all uh, all the time to to, to fly, right? And uh, and during during pandemics, that especially that we didn't have anything to do with with, with my son, we. We observe a lot of birds, you know? and uh, we, we we see, you know, that there the, the was oh, you see, me? Look, look at that, no, there, there is this 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 machine probably, and they are going up, and 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 this transition, even at at at, at the level, at, at, as far as I understand, at the level of meteorology is not well understood. How uh, the, the people know that the, if 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 the, the gradient of temperature is not is, is not is not too high, you have convection. And and but but when the gradient of temperature is is is, uh, is big enough, you have hurricanes. But they don't know how exactly how you go from just convection to hurricane. Uh, and and that, I think that's as, as, as I say, it, it, it's a great challenge, and we don't have any idea, any clue how to deal with that. Well, so you mentioned at the beginning that you needed uh, irreducibility. Uh, so what if you didn't have it? I mean. I don't know if this is reasonable. Okay, question. so uh, actually, I, I just assume irreducibility uh, to be um, uh, as a convenient uh, hypothesis to work with, because uh, then everything is well defined and 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 you don't really have to worry about anything. But uh, it, it, um, I can I, I can mention so so the. Uh, um, this is uh, something that. Uh, some of my PhD, uh, two PhD students uh, have been doing is that uh, probably you know about modern model, no? Okay, so modern model is, uh, or, or, or maybe uh, in its other incarnation, Ray Fisher. So Ray Fisher is, is this, uh, it's, it's a very popular model in, in epidemiology. It's, uh, it's, it's about uh, what, what you call it? genetic drift, no? So, it's, uh, so you have a population of N individuals and you have two, uh, two characteristics, A and B. And the idea is that uh, you go to the next generation of individuals, you, the, the, the population is fixed, and all these guys inherit this, these characteristics for, uh, from one guy in the previous generation. So you have, a, you have seven A's, 12 B's, so the chances that B's are going to do, be dominant below again. And you go, you go like that, you, use, you, you choose one of the, your uh, guys above uh, uniformly at random. Someday, what happens is that everybody will be A or everybody will be EB, and then there is a extinction. And this, this model is super well understood, very, very, very um, uh, people know everything about it, but um, we were focusing in one particular question which was not answered in, in the literature, which is that, uh, let's say that uh, you start A and B, but the, now the question is how much time you will, you have to wait until you forget which one were A and which ones were B. And what happens is that that happens much before the density starts to move. Okay, and uh, that, that, that's a question about the simple Markov chain that you can try to answer, and uh, and and this methodology can be used there to solve that question. Um, and, and, and it's a chain that is not irreducible, but the, the, the point is that the, the time window on which you are looking at your chain is a, is a time window on which you still didn't get there. And so so, and so the, 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 all these things can, the, can be generalized to, to, more, to, to, to situations on which you don't have uh, some of the ingredients, but um, I think it's a, it's 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 really a, a good idea to to 
in this case, no, to, to, to give a course, for example, in this uh, particular setting, the simplest possible setting of just a finite state irreducible uh, Markov chains, because we already are able to give a lot of new uh, interesting uh, answers to questions which have been answered a long time ago. So we are, I, didn't, I did not understand what you said about the moron. What, what is this time? You said that you forget the you are in. So let's. Yeah. So imagine that you have A and B here, right? Mm -hmm. and, and, and here below, the question is uh, where are the A's? Yeah. Where are the, uh, I mean, in, in, uh, okay, I, in, imagine that, uh, imagine that, that these, these guys have fixed positions. Okay, so, so this is like a part, now, now it's a, like a particle system no? in, 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 in the lattice. And here are the A's and here are the B's, but here below, maybe uh, here you have A, B, A, B, D. And now you, uh, evolution, now you have A, A, B, A, no? And then you want to know, at which time you forget about the information that here everybody was A and here everybody was B. You choose the parent, you choose the parent with some distance or something like that, or otherwise after one time. Yeah. Let me think. Uh... No, only the number. Huh? Only the proportion of A. Yeah. No, no, I mean, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, let me, yeah, let me. Okay, let me let me be a little bit more rigorous because yes, I, I, maybe I was a little bit uh, too. Uh, so imagine that you have a now. What I refer is that you have a, a particle system, and you put a clock on each one of these guys, and when the clock rings, you change your your state. To one uh, to to the state of one of your neighbor uh, of one guy here chosen uniformly at random. So it's like a it's more like a voter model. Okay, so this is the, this is the so you have the voter model and the, the question is if you start with one opinion here and in this region with with, with another opinion when this when at which point these opinions are going to be uh, mixed in, in space. So that's that's the question. Okay, and 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 this is um this is something that happens much before the um, the density change. And then, of course, here you can uh, uh, start to think about variations of this problem, you know, the changing the topology, the complete graph to another graph, etc. But um, just to say that. Uh, uh, there are questions which uh, can be formulated in terms of this, uh, in these ideas, which are not questions about the final state of our Markov chain, but actually about the, the initial stages of the Markov chain as well. Just a quick question, I guess, if we have time. I was wondering, you, you stated the CLT for dimensions less than three. I was wondering, maybe this is you know, not a question for the short amount of time, but can you comment a bit on the difficulties that arise if you want to ask the question in dimensions higher than three? Is it mostly on like the SPD level or? Yeah, so at some point, somebody that, that, that did some remarks that are, are pointing in that direction is that I told you that at the beginning, okay, so you know, you, you imagine that the correlations are small, right? So let's assume that correlations are zero. And if the correlations are zero, maybe this product measure is a good idea to, to, to work with. Now we have a, a convergence result about the fluctuation of this guy, and we actually know what the correlations are because I wrote actually a formula for them, right? So that means that in principle now I can say, okay, well now that I know what the correlation, the right correlations are, I can come back to to my original problem and say, okay, let's now define new t, for example, as something like a product of Bernoulli's times something like that. And now this guy has the right, it's, 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 it's uh, imposing the right correlation structure on your, uh, on your reference measure. Then, um, well, I, I, I believe that uh, doing that, you can improve dimension, right? Because uh, 
the, the, the point in the, the, our, our restriction on dimension comes from the fact that uh, we know that the, this uniform, uh, this, this uh, product measure as reference measures is good, but it's not good enough. And, and, the, and, the, and, and, and this, uh, the, the quality of this approximation deteriorates with, uh, with dimension. So you, if, 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 you, if you come up with a better, uh, with a better uh, uh, approximation, maybe you can go to, to higher dimensions. But this is more a question to Benoit than to me, no? Okay. <laughs> So uh, can, can you go uh, can you go to higher than, to dimension higher than three? That was the question. And the answer and, and, and the suggestion is can you do this and get uh, better dimensions? Let's say at the moment the safe answer is no. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But so theoretically, this is the, the, the thing. And, and in in some cases, uh, you can implement this idea. We have, we have, we have, we have some works. That um, that point into the, the direction. Thank you. If not, let's thank Milton again for the good work.